Hello everyone, welcome back to the CLSR and I'm your host, The Counselor. Today we're going to talk about a interesting topic, kind of disturbing at the same time. You know when you haven't seen those friends for years and then you finally decide that, you know, you're going to get together with them, you know, you reach out, you talk to them. Well, that happened to me recently and I got to tell you, it was really a surprise and the reason why is because when I saw this friend, you know, I looked at them and they were just totally different. I mean, their mannerisms, their look was totally different. And it just threw me for a loop. I didn't even know what to do. I didn't know what to say. But there was something that's really agitated me. And then I noticed that they didn't have any of their teeth. Like, they might have had one or two. And I'm like, what has this person been doing? What's going on here? And these symptoms that I was seeing were quite disturbing. I mean, I left that get together feeling quite disturbed. And then when I talked with my partner, I said, you know, that person has really changed. They were talking different, responding differently. They didn't really seem to have such a great sense of humor. And sometimes they would switch topics in the middle of conversations and I was really put back and I would couldn't get a grip on it. And I was talking to my partner and I said, what's going on? And she said, you know what? You might have to admit it. And I said, admit what? That your friend is a meth head. I said, that's not nice to say about my friend, you know, calling them a meth head. She goes, that's just what it could be. And I'm like, no, not them. Because this type of friend, when we were growing up, very responsible, stayed out of trouble, was a mama's boy, always made her proud. But with this behavior, it just made me feel uneasy. And then I was thinking, man, I haven't been around that area in years. And look, as, you don't even know. People just get into things. So really, what we're really going to talk about today is some of these signs of meth abuse methamphetamines you've heard about it and some of you are you know you're on the fence because it's like could it really be i mean they, they seem okay but then uh, they just there's parts of them that just don't seem the same they're different like how could a person change so much right and i was like well how am i gonna know i gotta do some research i got to discover what's going on i mean i gotta put my finger on this uh, you know like it's true we do so methamphetamines, it's a very addictive psychostimulant. Meth is available in white or light brown powder form with visible crystals. This drug is most commonly smoked, but can also be taken in injection or pill form. Parents and loved ones can recognize the signs of meth use in order to seek immediate help if they want to recognize it, if they're looking for it, right? If they want to help those loved ones come back, the drugs, right? You know what I mean? You're going to have to do some work. You're going to have to listen up. You, you can recognize the signs of meth use by looking for physical signs, psychological symptoms, and behavioral indications. And that's what we're really going to talk about today. And I think we do because I'm sorry to tell you, this drug, it's come out of nowhere. And it's just taken these streets by storm and i want to be aware and i want you to be aware because you might have family members right that are on it or taking it and you want to get an idea of what's going on so i want you to notice some of these physical signs dilated eye the droopy tired eye right the weight loss watch out because if you had a friend who had some weight all of a sudden they really don't have any weight watch it or the eye twitching see these are direct signs that i want you to look out for search for these physical changes notice any changes in the person's physical appearance like the physical signs are very common among people who abuse meth unlike with other drugs which may have more subtle effects you got to use your observation skills do you notice anything different about how the person looks any physical illness or complaints, some common physical signs of meth, as I said, that excessive weight loss due to low appetite, dilated pupils, 
eyes looking all droopy, tired, or having dark circles, like this could be a loss that they've got going on because they're not sleeping well at night. And that eye twitching is very common amongst people who have meth, right? And if you've heard, you got to also look one big sign is that tooth decay. Look for that tooth decay. Meth can adversely affect teeth, turning them brown and causing decay. Or what do they call that? I think it's called meth mouth. Yeah. Now, I ain't saying you should call somebody on meth, meth mouth, because that will insult them. They might lose it. But it is meth mouth. The person may also have red or sore gums because of damage caused by the meth. This may look like rotten or browning teeth. The person may also have missing teeth. You can look up pictures of meth mouth online and compare them to what I'm talking about. I want you to check for track marks or nosebleeds. You will notice track marks on the person's arms if the drug is being injected or nosebleeds if the drug is being snorted. There may also be burn marks on the person's lips or fingers if the drug is smoked using hot glass or a metallic pipe. I want you to be careful, people, right? I want you to pay attention to harsh body odors. If a person is using meth, they will often give off a very bad odor. This is due to a combination of the drug use itself and the person forgetting to wash while they are using. Sometimes the odor is similar to the smell of ammonia. You know what ammonia smells like. So if you got some family members that smell like ammonia, right? All you got to do is do a checklist, right? And they can... I, you know they're going to deny it up and down, but if they smell like ammonia and they look like they ain't got no teeth or the teeth are all rotten or worn down, right? Also, think about somebody who's 30, but they look like they're 60. Identifying signs of this premature aging. Meth users often start to look old before their time because their skin is damaged, becoming rough and itchy, and their, their hair can start to fall out. It's true, right? You got to notice any skin lesions. Skin lesions are very common in meth users due to the compulsive scratching at the face. You know what I mean? When people on that crack in the 90s used to do all that scratching, especially when they were jonesing. But meth, uh-uh. Now they got that itchy, scratchy thing going on and it dries out the skin. Look for open sores on the face. Observe if the person picks or scratches at his face. The lesions often become infected and result in sores or scars. Oh, yeah, this is real. Uh-huh. Identify the long-term health issues. You're going to have to because you, if you can see this person and they're going downhill, you're right. You got to know certain things, you know, and you got to be able to talk to them about it. Meth users are more prone to diseases, including high blood pressure and heart diseases. They may also pass away at an early age as a result. Right. Think about it. And if you're using meth, you got to be careful for that hypertension or high blood pressure. Right. That tachycardia, which is that rapid heartbeat, hypothermia, you know, that body temperature that is above normal, you know, the heart attack, stroke, seizures, you know, liver failure. Right. Yeah, it could attack the liver. Especially if you're doing or having large doses of it, you know, that's going to really impact them. You know, respiratory symptoms such as bronchitis, if meth is smoked. And you also have risk for HIV and hepatitis C. This increases dramatically due to the risky sexual behaviors and that needle sharing. Right. It could happen. Now. The psychological symptoms are a little bit more challenging. And that's why I said it threw me off. I was like, wait, I got to get a hold of this. I got to spread the word like the wise old bird because I'm disturbed. You know what I mean? So, you know, what are the immediate psychological symptoms that I'm looking for? Well, the effects of meth may last several hours to a day or so, depending on the use. Right. Like after uh, someone uses methamphetamine, I'm going to call it meth. They're going to usually experience that euphoria due to the increased dopamine in the brain, right? An increase in alertness, increase in cortisol levels like that stress hormone. And they're going to have decreased 
anxiety, right? Increased confidence, believe it or not. Their confidence could go up after they use this. And it could also have improved attention and concentration. But you know they're going to have a decreased appetite or that hypersexuality or increase in libido. And there even could be some increased energy. But you're definitely going to see some hyperactivity as evidenced by excessive talking, the ability to sleep, right? Where they can't really get to sleep. You know what I mean? They're having challenges. Higher doses of this mess can cause like um, anxiety and restlessness, compulsive behaviors and tremors, even that physical shaking. These symptoms are often called tweaking. You know, you ever hear somebody say, oh, you're tweaking. That's because you got them a little bit of shakes because they're on that meth, right? You're going to have to watch out for those longer signs. That's really something that you want to be aware of. Due to the chemical changes in the brain, some psychological symptoms are also visible. Like these psychological signs may include like uh, impaired judgment or inhibition, hallucinations, delusions such as seeing or hearing things which others may not. Now, you also have to watch out for that aggressive behavior. See, if they don't get access to that meth, you got to watch it. Be careful, right? They're going to be aggressive. They might start picking an argument for no reason at all, you know. But you know they're going to have that increased anxiety and depression, paranoia, believing that somebody is out to get them, social isolation, insomnia, right? You're just going to have to search for some life disturbances as well if you can like social occupational or functional disturbances these are very common among people who use and abuse meth the school college life work life or social life of people who use meth is impaired you can detect signs of these disturbances by doing like things like uh try to remain in touch with the teachers peers or their close friends they can help you, right, track some of their recent activities. Keep in touch with colleagues. If the person is employed, they can tell you how the person behaves while at work and can fill you in on their daily routine. You got to observe the legal, social, financial condition of the person who is suspected of being a meth abuser, poor social functioning, financial trouble, or frequent legal issues, which are commonly the result of meth abuse. Now, look for those signs of impaired thinking. This may show up as a reduced cognition or deteriorated memory. You know, like, it's almost like a brain fart. Like a lot of brain farts. It's almost like they got gas in their belly and they can't think right. Many brain cells are damaged as a result of continuous meth use. The damage is caused by many caustic chemicals used in the meth preparation and can manifest itself in slower brain functions and loss of memory. So if you see like attention issues, issues with working memory or solving problems, lower decision-making skills, that's a serious problem. You might even have to catch some signs of that withdrawal when they start to come down. You'll see them. Withdrawal signs occur when a habitual user stops taking the drug. Most symptoms of withdrawal typically subside around 7 to 10 days after taking meth. Withdrawal symptoms from meth are mostly psychological and not as physical as other drugs, right? Decreased motivation, irritability, anxiety, depression, lower frustration tolerance, low energy or fatigue, sleepiness, impaired social functioning, inability to concentrate, loss of sexual interest, possibility of suicidal thoughts. Just those thoughts that they may think of harming themselves. And they might even have that intense craving for the drug that may last up to five weeks, right? So what about their behaviors, right? Watch out for those behaviors. Keep an eye on the activities of that person. The observation of certain activities is very important in identifying the signs of meth abuse. Some common social problems faced by those who abuse are like that heightened, unsafe sexual activity due to drug effects like confusion and inability to make decisions. They could be excessive aggression leading to a relationship problem with the parents, 
peers, siblings, you know, friends, keep in company with those who either abuse drugs or have easy access to drugs. Watch who they hang around. I'm serious. I can't even tell you how many clients have told me, you know what? I know my son's friend did this, but I didn't ever think my child would do it. Like, what kind of person are you? You can't even, birds of a feather flock together, right? I'm serious. Think about that. Notice that hyperactivity and impulsivity. Being hyperactive, impulsive, and having low judgment are commonly associated with the meth use. Pay attention to the person's behavior and notice if they are uncharacteristic right, in that individual. Notice excessive talking. The person may try to finish other sentences and give advice to others whether they know anything about the topic or not. Right? They could do that. Impulsivity may mean the person behaves recklessly and refuses to worry about the outcomes of risky behavior, right? Now, I want to put a disclaimer out there. When I talked about people finishing other sentences and giving advice to others, right? I don't want you to jump to conclusion because we all have family members that do that. You know, don't go around calling them meth heads or nothing because I said something. That's not the case at all. I'm just saying this is just one of those indicators, those behavioral indicators that you might find that this person on meth is showing. Now, you know, and I know that one thing with drug users in general is they often have problems with financial issues. So you're going to have to pay attention to these financial issues. Meth users often have financial concerns due to their drug use. Some meth users may spend all of their own money to get the drug. Doesn't matter what it is. They might sell your stereo, your VCR, your TV, your dog. I don't know, but when you're on drugs, you're not thinking right. So you're gonna do some things that normal people don't do. That's why you got to know that drugs are not good for you. I don't care. I don't care what your parents say. Tell your kids, don't do drugs. You don't need to just because it's there. So that's why I'm saying when you're on drugs, you're not thinking right. So be careful. Because if you do have a family member that's doing them drugs and then they take you to court, you know what's going to happen. All that's going to happen is their lawyer is going to say, well, your honor, they did all this and stole all that and took advantage of this person because they were on drugs. And that's an excuse sometimes to the court, right? Oh, poor you. We're going to give you some treatment. Meanwhile, you're sitting on the street. You ain't got no house because you couldn't pay the rent. Somebody robbed your bank account, took the money under your mattress. Well, that was your fault because you know why? You didn't pay attention to the counselor's podcast on meth head, right? It sounds like a terrible thing. You know, it, it could be insulting, but it's the truth. So that's why we're talking about it, right? These people that have an inability to meet financial needs because of excessive spending on drug-related activities, like buying drugs or supplying drugs for a party. Notice your unpaid bills or not being able to afford normal items like food, right? You know what I'm saying? If those bills aren't being paid, you know they're not taking care of business. Right? If they can't afford the basic food, there's something wrong. Excessive debt as a result of asking for some money. Right? If they're asking too much for that money, you got to take a look. Something's changed, especially if they're sitting on the couch and they ain't working. Watch it. You know what they say. Idle hands is the devil's workshop. Shouldn't be having too many people sitting on that couch because they're either going to watch TV or they're going to get into some meth or they're going to do something wrong. And if you start to see this excessive debt and they're spending and spending, they ain't working and they've got all these symptoms, do the math. You know, if they have problems with friends and peers over money issues due to the drugs use, like inability to pay back their debts, you know what I mean? It's easy for a lot of them to want to borrow from friends. Sometimes they'll fool you and they'll lie to you and tell you they're borrowing that money for something that they're really not borrowing it for. Sometimes they'll say, oh, I owe my friend money. Can you lend me some money? And you lend them some money. What's really scary, I got to tell you, is I know some people who have their kids who are on it and the kids borrow money. And then as soon as that parent wants that money back, that person goes into a rage. They flip out. And you got to be careful because you know what? They could lose it. And I mean lose it. I mean hurt you bad. So you got to know if you start lending out some money, 
you know, and like I said, some people are scared. Once they lend out that money and they keep coming back, as soon as you can't give them that anymore, it could get that bad. Now, I'm not saying all people who are on that drug do that, but this is something that does happen quite frequently, right? Like the inability to report where the money is or being spent when asked. You know, if they're stealing, like if you say, hey, where's that money I gave you? Just ask me for money. Where's that money I just gave you? You know, and then they're quiet or they're they're trying to ignore you or they come up with some silly, outrageous excuse. You got to be worried, especially when that stealing comes along. But like I said, those people who lend out that money and when the people on meth come back for that money. Remember, I know you're going to be scared. I'm going to tell you right now, you better get some help. Because it could turn into something. That person could start to, you know, have those hallucinations and stuff. Like you're the bad person and you're not doing for them. So I can understand why people are scared. Because these people aren't in the right mind. Right? So you're going to have to pay attention and protect yourself. So if you're dealing with somebody's on that meth, don't try and do it by yourself. Don't try to work with them and, oh, I can handle them. And, you know, or, oh, poor Johnny. He's got a habit, silly rabbit. No, you got to say, listen, I got to go to the professionals. I got to get some help for Johnny. Get him out of this environment. Don't try to fix them. Yeah, try to assist them by getting others to help. But if this person doesn't want to help themselves, you got to protect yourself because this drug could really do some damage, especially when those people aren't getting their way. You got to pay attention to the company your loved ones keep. Meth users travel in packs. Right. Meth users tend to hang around with other people who abuse drugs. This is one of the easiest ways to detect drug abuse. Meth abusers often have the following people like people who um, abuse meth or any other drug or they they have easy access to the drugs or, you know, or who these people who they hang around don't pose a threat like those who won't tell the drug user's family or criticize him for his addiction. You know what I mean? So they basically go along with the person on that meth. So you got to be aware of that secretive behavior and social isolation. Because if they're doing it, of course they don't want people to know. It's going to show. See a 19-year-old looking 35, you know something's wrong. But, you, you know, they're still going to try and act like, you know what I mean, you don't know what's up. But if you do, now you don't have an excuse. See, like when using the person may spend a whole day in his room with a closed door, not allowing anyone to enter. Right. And if you do knock on that door, they're going to lose it. Also, the person will behave in a very closed off, secretive manner to hide their drug use. It's very common, people, you know, and some of you, like I said, are afraid to knock on that door. You're afraid to, you know, because they might flip out. Be careful. I don't, hey, I don't disagree with you. Be worried about it, but don't try to handle it on your own, right? Look for that meth apparatus in the person's living area. If they go out, do a room check. And I could not, I'm not just talking about young people. If you have a partner, right, and the partner's not doing right, especially during this pandemic, you know, this pandemic has laid off a lot of people and a lot of people are looking for money or they're looking for ways to cope. So some of your partners, you know what I mean, out there are going to be out there searching and getting into those drugs and trying to pretend like they're going to work when they're really not. Or if they're going to work, half that money instead of coming home and taking care of business is going to go on that drug. So, right, you're going to have to look for some of that stuff. So if they leave to go to work, you might have to check it out. I know a lot of you never would think of it and you're afraid that that person's going to call you. Hey, let them go to work and call them at work and then go check things out in the room. Look around for this stuff. Right. If you find certain drug taking apparatus in the person's headquarters where they're at, it is a pretty definite indication that the person is taking meth or some other drug crack. You know what I mean? Xanax, whatever it is. But you got to look for the tube. You know what I mean? There's a tube like a, a ballpoint pen, surgical tubing that may have been used to sniff meth. A uh, crumpled can of aluminum foil, a small bag of white powder, it looks like crystals, right? It's quite popular stuff. A soda can with a hole in one of its sides. A syringe, which is that needle, right? Which may be used to inject drugs. If you see those cotton balls around and you know, hey, they ain't got bad skin and they got all these cotton balls, you better start investigating. You know what I mean? They might be using those 
cotton balls doing something they ain't supposed to do. Like, right, you know what I mean? Cleaning off the needle ends. Who knows? Whatever it is, you're going to have to understand their pattern of behavior and the patterns that occur with people who are on meth. You're going to have to understand that these abusers intake meth just to enjoy its so-called benefits, such as a feeling of energy, euphoria, increased alertness, right? Uh, they might even have a sense of power. Keep in mind, they might not be psychologically addicted to this drug, and they most likely take it by swallowing it or snorting it. See, low-intensity users may include truck drivers trying to stay alert while driving long distances, workers trying to stay awake through overnight shifts, yes, doctors, nurses, uh, staffs, uh, security guards. I'm serious. These, This is what they use. Or taxis, taxis driving around. You know, they want to get more money, so they're driving in those uh, taxi cabs or Ubers or whatever just to get those long hours or stay up because they're always on the road to keep them that alert, right? So a homemaker trying to juggle some housework, raising kids, or trying to be a good or perfect spouse. Yeah, these are meth users. All kinds of people are using it. Be surprised. Got to open up your eyes, people. Be aware and be really aware of the intense abusers. High intensity abusers prefer taking meth by injecting or smoking it. They do so to feel high or aroused. They may become psychologically and physically addicted. They continuously intake large amounts of this drug. And this is those intense abusers, right? You're going to have to recognize when they're binging. Binge abusers need to take more meth every few hours to maintain a high. They will do this for several days. After taking the drug, binge users feel mentally and physically active. They feel a huge rush or high, but can quickly crash. See, they also could be sleepy, very sleepy, have those hallucinations, paranoia, irritability, uh, that unprovoked aggression. Uh, they often experience Punding, which is repeated compulsive behavior such as sorting objects or cleaning. Several hours after their last binge, the person may sleep for many hours. And you might even get disturbed because you're like, why is this person tripping? Why is this person sleeping all day? We've got things to do. But this person's sleeping for excessively long periods of time and maybe they're binging and going through this change in their lives. But you're concerned. And if you are concerned, you're going to have to do a little bit of research. You might have to find out in your community where some of the supports are for these people. Uh, you're going to have to try your best to be able to find someone you can talk to about it. And maybe when the time is right, you might even need to sit down with that individual to discuss what's going on with them. Like, it's out there, meth. And it's out in many different environments. It's just that now it's hitting the streets. There's a lot of kids who are getting into it or they're mixing these drugs. They're getting meth. They're getting fentanyl. They're getting all these drugs. And, you know, they're, some of these drugs are being mixed in private labs. And the chemicals that they're mixing with them are messing with these kids' mind. And the adults, they're losing it. So there's a segment out there that, you know, it's really sad because... These things are so worrisome because they're just taking control of some of their lives. And people who are using it, you could imagine to stay up for longer, to, you know, maybe focus, maybe be in school to study longer at certain points. And it's just out there. So you have signs and symptoms that we've discussed today. And I want you to take this serious because the long term effects are deadly. Like I told you, you're going to have those organ failures, your, your rotted teeth, or you know what I mean? It's just, it ages you. And if you can, get help immediately. And if you're a user yourself, you can get some help for it. There are agencies out there that you can get some help. And if you feel that you need someone to, to support you, you're going to have to speak to a family member. And I know you may be embarrassed. But we all have our issues, and I'm not pointing a finger, but I am saying that it takes a brave person to get some help. 
But there's too many of us who can't do that. They unfortunately, they suffer in silence and they don't want to come out. They're embarrassed. Well, do not do that to yourself. Do not punish yourself. Understand that we all make mistakes. And if you really want to get some help and if your situation seems dire and you can have some change in your life or if you could do something for yourself, just a little thing, one day at a time to make that difference. You might not be able to do it overnight. If you can wean yourself off of it, that's great. But a lot of people need help, you know, or they go to other drugs. Be careful because they talk about these gateway drugs and they're for real. Some of these kids don't start off with meth. They start off doing smoking weed or, you know, or doing some crank or some crack or some fentanyl or the mollies. Oh my goodness. The list is endless. But the truth is, is that there's drugs out there that lead to other drugs. I don't care what those researchers are trying to tell us. If you're doing drugs, you're doing drugs. You don't know what level. Once you see it, you got to tell these young people too. You got to say, hey, listen, you don't need to drink. You don't need to do drugs. Just because you got friends doing it, you can still hang around and not do drugs. I don't care. I know there's peer pressure, but you can say you don't need to do them. Right. I get concerned when young people get to these points. And you know what? I also have to look at what's going on in society. The people in charge. Right. The government. Right. Who's having this alcohol on every corner. It's still a drug. Right. It's still a drug. If you have it in what Metro, these grocery stores and you got all these drugs and every grocery store now has beer in it, at least or wine or whatever. Our children don't need that in our face. You know what I mean? In their faces, they just don't. But we're not helping that. See, we want to throw people in jail. And this is what gets me, people. We all talk about free will and what we should be doing. But what, we, what we're not talking about is influence and accountability. I said it. Influence and accountability. You got these bars open till 2 in the morning. You know what I mean? And they're, oh, they're adults, they're responsible. Listen, how many people are running people over and killing them? How many, not just kids, adults too. How many people are drinking and driving? But we don't pull it off because we're making money off of it, apparently. Oh, you should be responsible. Yes, we should, but there's still drugs. Do you understand? And the funny thing is, you're going to put somebody away for 5, 10 years, but you're selling it. Isn't that weird? Like if a drug dealer is selling drugs on a corner to kids or even adults and that person ODs and you know and then you want to take that person to court oh you sold drugs to that person you know and then because they sold it to them so why is it different if the government's putting alcohol on those shelves and letting people walk out and jump in their cars when you know their bars where they park their cars right so then you know they're under the influence but you let them jump in their car and you know they go home but half of them might not get in an incident, but some m might. But we're not making the government accountable, are we? You know, they're like, oh, yeah, we let this drug out there and we're making money off of it. But guess what? You're responsible. Yes, we do have some responsibility. But why all of it? Right? Why all of it? Now, I'm just being realistic. I'm just telling you, sure, we had it in control where we had it in bars and maybe one main uh, government controlled LCBO. But now it's in every grocery store. Right. And the United States has had that going on for years. And look how crazy part of that country is with all that gun toting and alcohol on every corner. It's crazy. You wonder why people are running into malls and shooting people up. They go crazy. It's crazy. They're doing it even here now more than ever. You wonder why. So it's this drug you're legalizing. You have this drug. Like, how much is enough? Anyways, I could go all day about this thing, but I am going to tell you something right now. People who are on meth, you got some signs, some symptoms, some things that you should look for. And you should help people, not judge them. I'm not judging them. When I'm joking around, I'm really serious when I say, listen, you're not just looking for signs to consequence or punish people because a lot of people need help. Right. They're doing it. They're supplementing something. Something's going on deep inside. And a lot of times we can't get that out of them. You know, they don't know how to get it out of them. So they're supplementing. They call it feeling good. But really, something deep's going inside where there's a part of them that's feeling that this is necessary in their lives. Right. I can't even tell you how 
when people talk about not doing drugs or not drinking, you don't need a religion to tell you that. But a lot of people, after they're doing it, they go into some of these religions and to straighten their lives out. But I'm saying right from the jump, we got to stop promoting it night and day through our television. Well, anyway, people, I want to thank you for listening and be like the wise old bird and spread that word. And I want you to take care of yourself. Meth is a drug and there are signs that you can detect and it's going to be some hard work. I'm not saying if you're trying to get somebody off them drugs that it is going to be easy because it is not. You're going to have to do what you need to do to support that person. But I don't want you to try to fix that person. That person's got to get the understanding that you can help them if they need some resources and support, but it's not your responsibility to do all their work for them. They have to meet you halfway. Do you understand? It's a hard road, but they will have to do some work right along with you. Your job is not to use your whole life to fix somebody who's on meth. 